and welcome to the Atoll, your home for Waterworld fandom. In today's quick collecting video, we'll be taking a look at all of the Japanese Waterworld collectibles in my collection. Let's begin by taking a look at some excellent Universal Studios Japan gift shop goodies. If you're unaware, Waterworld, a live sea war spectacular, is Universal Studios' live stunt show that acts as a sequel to the film. The show first premiered in Hollywood in 1995 and opened at Universal Studios Japan in 2001. So, the following items are memorabilia based on that specific live show. If you would like to learn more about the live show, I did an extensive video on the complete history of Waterworld A Live Sea War Spectacular, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. First up, we have my collection of Universal's Anniversary Trading Pins. These pins were released each year starting in 2001 when the park opened. I believe that they ran these promotional pins for the first five years that the park was open. Though I thought I had all five pins in this collection, when I went to create this video I realized I'm actually missing year four so I guess I'm still on the hunt for the complete collection. Let's look at the individual pins, each of which is displayed on these nice cardboard backings. The first anniversary pin is kind of an outlier in the bunch as it uses an actual photograph of the show for its main image. It also displays the park's corporate sponsor, Coca-Cola. On the back is a rubber fastener, and I'd have to say of the pins I have, this is probably the ugliest of the bunch. The second anniversary pin, which is displayed on this vertical folding backing, marks the more premium offset printed enamel style of pin. The pin displays a spectacular illustration of the Mariner on a jet ski with the seaplane blasting overhead. The back has a very nice dark metal finish with the same rubber fastener, and I think that this is probably the classiest of all the pins I have in my collection. The third anniversary pin is the largest in my collection and is displayed on this trifold backing. Again, the Mariner is on a jet ski with the seaplane crashing beside him. On the back, we get two metal fasteners to support the larger pin size, and I believe that this pin is the most bombastic of all the collection, given its elongated design. The fifth anniversary pin is probably the coolest design and is displayed on this bright single fold backing. Again, we have the Mariner and the seaplane, but we also have this swooping design and some stars. There's also the Coca-Cola logo in the corner, and on the back we have some printed text and a single metal fastener. And I'd have to say the whole design feels very retro in a cool way and is probably my favorite of the bunch. Moving on, let's have a look at some other Universal Studios Japan memorabilia with the Waterworld minifigures. These figures are part of a larger collection of 16 minifigures that were sold at the gift shops in the park. Let's look first at figure 8 of 16 in the collection, the Waterworld Seaplane. There's a great amount of detail in this very small figure, with the water splashing up and around the pontoons of the plane. Above the plane is a scaled down version of the front entrance into the live show, which has this little spout of water coming off of it. I'm not actually really sure what this detail is all about. Now looking at figure 9 of 16 in the minifigure collection, we have the Mariner on his stand-up jet ski. I think that the water and the jet ski are beautifully sculpted on this figure, but the Mariner himself is lacking a little bit of detail and his posture is a little awkward. Regardless, I still love this little figure, which has the same scaled down version of the front entrance. On the back side of the figures is the Universal Studios Japan insignia. And on the bottom we have which number they are in the collection, some copyright information, and the Coca-Cola logo. And I have to say, these two minifigures are among my personal favorite items in my entire Waterworld collection. There's just something really endearing about them, and I feel that they are an absolute must-have for any other hardcore collector out there. The last item we'll be looking at today is this very unique Sarashi movie poster. Sarashi movie posters, or advertising flyers, are unique to Japan and only available in the movie theater at the time of the film's release. They display unique Japanese designs and typography, and the one I own is no exception to this. On the front of the flyer, we have a watery landscape with the Mariner and the Trimoran cutting across the surface. Below them are some very interesting images. We have a sunken city and a ghostly rendering of the Statue of Liberty. 
Though these images are not in the actual film, the advertisers must have assumed that audiences would be familiar with the post-apocalyptic Statue of Liberty image from the Planet of the Apes and make the connection from there. In an interview, director Kevin Reynolds even said that he felt that the Mount Everest revelation at the end of the extended cut was his Planet of the Apes moment. The front of the flyer also displays the title of the film and Kevin Costner's name in Japanese characters. Also, it appears that the poster suggests that the year that the movie takes place is 2500 AD, a year that Dennis Gassner, production designer on the film, also suggests in the Making of Waterworld book. On the back side of the mini poster, we have lots of black and white photographs of different moments in the film. Unfortunately, I do not read Japanese, so I don't know what any of these captions actually say. Down in the right hand corner is an image of another mini poster. I don't own this other poster, but it uses this really cool rising sun image over the Mariner's face. And I gotta say, I love my Sarashi mini movie poster. There's just something so unusual about the image that it presents, and I really feel it's one of the most unique pieces in my whole Waterworld collection. Well, there you have it, that's a look at my Japanese Waterworld collection. If you have any of these items in your collection, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, it's the best way to show your support for the channel. And thanks, as always, for joining me at the Atoll.